So now that we have our card and camera set up with the animation, let's render. And to render, we need lights. So let's start by throwing some lights into our scene. We're going to put one light here, key light there. I'm going to put a fill light over here. And very simple lighting setup. Maybe let's pull this a little closer this way. And um, let's just take a peek at what we're at what we're working with. So we're going to our render setup and let's make sure we're in the right frame. We're going to go into the single, we're going to look at our resolution and those look good enough for what we need. So why don't we take a render? So everything's looking pretty bright. So why don't we turn on the IPR so we can see the lighting changes as we go. Now we'll change this view here. I'm gonna grab this light and we're going to we'll start by reducing the intensity, cut that in half. Oh looks like it changed our view. We'll just set that back to a physical camera. Let's set this the intensity down to 0.5. We're gonna set this intensity down to 0.3. Alright, let's mess around with our exposure from six to four. We'll set this one from six to four. And let's drop the intensity a little further. Maybe this one's gonna be 0 0.3. And this one is going to be 0 0.1. Now we can also pull these lights away. They may be too close and there we go. We don't wanna burn out too much. In fact, we can draw them back pretty far. And let's put our exposure back up. There we go. So just adjust this a little more. 0.2 on the intensity. This one being 0.1. Yeah. So this is starting to look pretty natural. Let's see if we can get a little more shadow just underneath that edge by I'm going to push this a little further this way, a little closer behind the camera so that that shadow can show up. Creates a little bit of uh, contrast between one, a little depth between one face and the other face. So now we have a little bit of shadow here. Uh, let's reduce the intensity. So maybe our exposure being at four was the right move. I'm gonna set that down to four, put the intensity back up to 3.3.4, yeah. As you can see, I'm just fiddling around with uh, the exposure and the intensity to get the right lighting that's right for me. You can fiddle around with this as much as you want, but eventually if you, enjoy, if you like a particular lighting setup that you have, just go with it. Let's take a look at how that face looks, and that face looks less bright, but we don't lose too much when it turns away. And I think we have a good lighting setup. Great. Well, now let's stop the IPR and let's set up our render sequence. Now, what do we do with our render sequence? We're going to go into our render setup and we're going to go into our time output. Now, this is going to render out a single rendered frame for every single frame that's in our timeline. All right. Uh, let's take a look at our timeline again and go back into that those those technically 91 frames because we're starting at frame zero and we're ending at frame 90. Now we don't need the same frame twice. As you can see, 90 and frame zero are exactly the same. So we're going to go into our range here and rather than zero to 100 as it's set up, we're gonna set it up from one to 90. And that way we actually get a true 90 frames uh, and we don't have to double up on a frame. Um, when it comes out and you start to use it for, for when you turn them into videos, you might notice a little stutter that happens when a frame is rendered twice in your video. So it's good to just keep it out um, in the first place. Now, Going to, it's going to start from 1 to 90. Great. 
Now, where's all of these frames going to go? Well, we can go down to our render output, select files. This will typically directly open you up into the render output folder of your 3D project. So why don't we start that here? We're going to name this turn turntable dryad card. We're going to pick the format PNG or TIFF. It depends on what your needs are, but let's start. Let's go with a PNG sequence. Now we're going to save. We're going to just 24 bit or depending on what you need. Alpha channel is important. And we've pretty much set ourselves up. Now before we set the range, why don't we start a single render? See how it looks and we'll just start it here. Now render. There we go. Take a closer look. Looking pretty good. And when we go into our folder, into our 3D project folder, we'll go to the render output. We can see that is the dried card that gets made. Let's actually reconsider. If it's going to dump directly into the render output folder, maybe let's be a little more organized and create a new folder. Call that one the dryad card turn table. Let's say footage. All right, we'll go back into our files. We're going to set the render output to be in this folder. And we should be ready to output. So why don't we select our time output back to range and we're going to render 90 frames. So it may take a little bit depending on how fast your computer is. So why don't we check back once the render is completed? So start the render. Now that the rendering has finished, let's take a look at our outputs. So we'll select here, take a look at the dried card turntable footage, and you should see that it is filled with single frame renders of each and every frame of the animation. Now that we have all of our renders, we can gather them all together and put them into our favorite compositing software, such as After Effects or other video editing softwares that can import a sequence. Uh, you can also take single renders out of this out of this sequence and use it for the graphics that you might need. Like for instance in the Tome of Summoning where we not only had the rotating animation but we also had single renders of our folded reference card.